Hello and welcome to the video tutorial for the use of GenSAS, the Genome Sequence Annotation Server. Today I will be showing you how to create a new annotation project. The first step is to go to GenSAS, which can be found at gensas.bioinfo.wsu.edu. On the home page for GenSAS, there are a few different tabs of interest. Under the Available Tools tab, there is a table of all the tools that have been integrated into GenSAS, with links to the documentation for each tool. Under the Help tab, there are links to tutorials for GenSAS and WebApollo and a contact form where you can submit questions and report technical problems. The first step to use GenSAS is to request a user account. After you have a user account, you can log on to GenSAS from the home page. Once you are logged in, you can proceed to the GenSAS interface by clicking the Use GenSAS tab. There are three main areas of the GenSAS interface. In the header, there is a flowchart of the annotation process. As you progress through GenSAS, steps will become available for use. There are also links to your user account, the site homepage, and to log out. The name of the current project is also displayed. On the right side is an accordion menu that lets you view your, the job queue, open the integrated Web Apollo and JBrowse, share your project, and manage uploaded DNA sequences. The last area is the tab region, and this is the main work area for annotating with GenSAS. To get started in GenSAS, the first step is to open the Project tab. Under the Project tab, there is an Instructions section that can be viewed or hidden by clicking on Instructions. All tabs in GenSAS have an Instructions section that describes how to use the tab in lieu of a user manual. Under the Project tab, you have two options. You can either open an existing project, which includes projects that have been shared with you by another GenSAS user, or you can begin a new project. When beginning a new project, you will need to provide a project name, choose the project type, and enter the genus and species of your organism. The other information is optional. You can also choose to enter a project prefix for your gene model names. If you leave this blank, GenSAS automatically uses the first letter of the genus and species as the project prefix. You can also control the number of emails that GenSAS sends you during the annotation process. Once everything is entered, just click the Create Project button, and the summary screen will appear. You also will notice that the Sequences arrow is green, which means it's available for use in the annotation project. Please note the Reset Expiration button on the project summary. All GenSAS projects have a 120-day expiration. When the expiration date nears, GenSAS will send you a reminder email, and you can log in and reset the expiration date if you would like to keep the project. If you would like to make changes to your project, please click on the Make Changes section. If you want to switch between GenSAS projects, you need to click the Close This Project button and you'll be taken back to the original project tab where you will have the option of starting a new project or opening an existing project. Once the project has been created, the Sequences tab will change color and be available for use. There are two ways to upload sequences into GenSAS. You can either cut and paste FASTA formatted sequences into the text box, or you can upload FASTA files. You can also select sequences that have been previously uploaded into GenSAS. For new sequences, you can upload FASTA files with multiple sequences, but please note that all sequences in that FASTA file will be analyzed in the project. Please follow the instructions about what characters can be in the FASTA file name and sequence names. And if you get an error loading a file, it is usually because these rules were not followed. Then please select the sequence type and enter the assembly version number. If you do not have an assembly version number, either choose one or use the GenSAS default of one and click the Use Sequences button. To begin the next step, click on the Files arrow to open the Files tab. This is where you can choose to upload supporting data files for use with the annotation tools and Web Apollo. Addition of supporting files is not required, but highly recommended, since this information will improve the annotation quality. There are a few different file types that can be added to GenSAS. Under the Evidence Files section, you can upload FASTA files of repeat libraries, cDNA, EST, and transcript evidence, 
or protein evidence. The data added here will be available for use with the repeat finding and annotation tools available under the repeats and gene steps respectively. Please note that GenSAS provides by default the RefSeq transcript and protein databases for plants, invertebrates, bacteria, and fungi, as well as the latest SwissProt and Tremble protein databases. Other RefSeq database categories will be added as needed. In the future, GenSAS will also allow you to add FASTQ files of RNA-seq reads. Under the Gene Predictions, Repeats, or Alignments section, you can upload GFF3 files from previous annotations or that were output from other annotation tools. The data added here will be available for use with Evidence Modeler under the Consensus step and visible in JBrowse for use with Web Apollo. Please make sure that the name of your sequence matches the identifier in the first column of the uploaded GFF3 files. After all files are added, click the Done Submitting Files button. In the repeat step, you can use two programs to find repetitive elements in your sequence. Repeat finding is essential for accurate gene finding in eukaryotes. If you are annotating prokaryote or viral sequences, you can skip this step by clicking the Done Finding Repeats button. The two available tools are Repeat Masker, which uses species-specific evidence to identify repeats, or Repeat Modeler, which is a de novo repeat finder. For Repeat Masker, there are multiple settings that you can set. If you want to use the repeat library that you uploaded previously, go down to the Select a Repeat Library file and select it. Once the settings are as you want them, click the Add Repeat Masker Job button and the job will be added to the job queue. If you would like to add another Repeat Masker job with different settings, all you have to do is change the name of the job and pick your settings and hit Add Repeat Masker Job. And the second Repeat Masker Job will be added to the job queue. For all tools in GenSAS, you can run multiple instances of each as long as the job name is different. Once you have set up all the repeat finding jobs you would like, click the Done Finding Repeats button. On the right side menu, there is an overview of the job queue that tells you the status of your jobs. When you click the View Full Report, a tab will open that has more details about each job, including the position in the queue. If you click on the job name in either the menu on the right or the Job Queue tab, it opens another tab that takes you to a summary of that job. On the Job tab, you will find the summary of the parameters that were used, as well as the raw output and log files, and a table that summarizes the number of features that were annotated. You can download the output files by clicking on the file names. Once all your repeat finding jobs have completed, you can use the masking tab to create a mass consensus sequence for use with the other annotation tools. If you are working on a prokaryote or virus, just click the skip repeat masking step to proceed to the gene step. For eukaryotes, before starting the mass consensus, you will need to decide which sets of repeat data to include. You can view the data multiple ways. You can either view the raw data and the details for the job through the job queue like I just showed you, or you can use the integrated JBrowse. To open JBrowse, click on the browser section of the right-hand accordion menu, and then click on the Open Web Apollo button. Two new tabs open, and you will need to select the JBrowse tab to view your data. If the tracks are not visible, click the boxes next to the track names on the left. Once you have looked at the data, decide which data sets will be included in the mask consensus and return to the repeat masking tab. On this tab, select the data sets that you wish to include and click mask sequences. A masking sequences job then appears in the job queue. Once the mask consensus is completed, the gene step will become available. On the Genes tab, you can set up a variety of structural annotation tools. There are four categories of tools. Under Gene Prediction, Glimmer 3 is for prokaryotes, and the rest of the tools are for eukaryotes. Please note that you cannot run FGeneSH through GenSAS, but there is a place to upload your data so you can use it in the annotation process. Each of the tools has settings that you can change. And, as with the repeat tools, you can run multiple instances of each tool by giving it a unique name. 
Under Transcript Alignments, you can set up nucleotide blast and blat jobs. GenSAS does provide RefSeq transcript libraries by default, but any custom databases that you uploaded under the file step will be available here as well. Under Protein Alignments, you can set up protein blast jobs either using the provided RefSeq databases, SwissPro, Tremble, or any custom databases you uploaded. In the Other Tools section, there is an ORF Finder, a SSR finding tool, and tRNA scan. You can monitor the progress of the jobs in the queue, and you do not have to remain logged into GenSAS for these jobs to complete. Once all the jobs are complete, click on the Move to Gene Consensus button, and the consensus step will become available. Once all of your jobs have finished and you have looked at the data in JBrowse, you can choose which data sets will be used to create a gene model consensus with Evidence Modeler under the Gene Consensus tab. You will need to decide which data to include and what weight or importance to assign each data set. Higher values should be given to evidence-based data, like EST and cDNA alignments, and lower values should be given to predictive data, such as gene model prediction tools. If you do not assign a weight to the data set, the data is not included in the consensus. Once you have entered the weights, click on Create the Create Consensus Prediction button. A consensus gene set job will appear in the job queue. You can also choose to skip this step by clicking on the Skip Consensus Prediction button. Once the consensus job is completed, you will be able to move on to the annotate stage. Once your project has data, you can share it with other GenSAS users. To share a project, click on the Sharing section of the right-hand menu. Then click on Share this project to open the Sharing tab. You then just need to select the GenSAS user from the drop-down menu and choose the level of sharing. Read-only users will only be able to view the data. Full access users will be able to start jobs and edit the annotation in Web Apollo. During the annotate stage, you can use Web Apollo to manually refine your annotation. During this step, an editable user-created annotation track appears on the JBrowse tab, and any changes that are made to this track are logged on the Web Apollo tab. I am going to show you some basics for using Web Apollo, but please read the documentation at the below website. Web Apollo lets you do many things, and I'm only going to give you a brief introduction. First off, the user created annotation track is fully editable, and any of the features from below can be dragged onto the user created annotation track. To drag a feature, you simply need to select it and drag. Please note that if you only select an intron or exon and try to drag, only that region will be taken to the user created annotation track. You need to double click to select the whole gene model. Web Apollo also lets you look at things in more detail, and it does this with a right click activated menu. So just right click on the future feature, and it will get a menu of multiple things that you can do. If you zoom to the base level, a diagram comes up showing you the amino acids, and you can drag and adjust the intron exon junctions and the start stop codons for your gene model. Any changes that you make to the user created annotation track show up under the Web Apollo tab if you click View Recent Changes. And if you have shared this project with another user, their edits will also show up here so you know who changed what. Currently, the only way to export the data from the user created annotation track in GenSAS is through Web Apollo. And to do that, you just need to click here, save track data, and choose GF3 or FASTA format. In the future, GenSAS will export this into our Publish tab, but that's a function that is in progress. On the Publish tab, you can choose which files to export. GenSAS will export GFF and FASTA formatted files for each of the selected tracks. The minimum amount of information needed for publication is automatically selected, but you can choose to export more data. GenSAS also incorporates an annotation version number into the exported files. You can set the version number or let GenSAS use the default of one. Once you have made your selections, click Publish. 
Once the publishing job is completed, click on the, the job name in the job queue. This will open the results tab. On this tab, you will find the files that were generated. To download the files, just click on the file name. This concludes the GenSAS demo. Please do not hesitate to contact us with questions and problems through our contact form. We value user input and thank you for using GenSAS.